Hi folks, good morning everyone and I hope everyone is fit and fine. A uh, small introduction about me. My name is Megha Mala and I work in the marketing team in Aretic. I will be the host of this webinar. A short introduction about the company. It's a unified marketing automation platform for B2B business team. Our paint company is Data AG Software Private Limited, a Bangalore based company that started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platform, EasySendy and Aretic. So EasySendy is mainly focusing on SME and SMB business, where Aretic is focused on customer from mid enterprise and enterprise. Around 2K plus companies across globe using Aretic and EasySendy product platforms. Both from January 2022, we started getting deep into India and Asia market. A short introduction about our Aritic Life. It's a product, it's a webinar, um, platform where we are trying to bring professional close to Aritic platforms with Aritic Life. It is an online talk show for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders, and working professionals. So this talk show includes webinars, on-demand, webcast, podcast, and live events from Aritic and Partner Network. Today's webinar topic is Bring Improved B2B Marketing ROI with Google Analytics 4. We have Vaswati Ramanujam with us who will be taking through the topic in details. Where a short introduction about Vaswati. Vaswati Akashwati is an apprentice leader in Mu Sigma. She manages operation across the organization. Swati has over 27 years of experience in various organizations like Sachi and Sachi, J. Walter, Thompson, Midlife, Digitus in various marketing and analytics roles. An experienced delivery head with a demonstrated history of working in the internet industry, Swati is skilled in digital analytics, e-commerce, customer relationship management, marketing analytics and marketing research. She is management graduate from Indian School of Business, Hyderabad and is currently based out of Bangalore, India. Now I want to request Swati if you are going to add something from your end. Over to Swati. No, nothing to add from my end. Meghamala, thank you so much for the nice introduction and thanks a lot to Aritik for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Swati. And uh, now I will request uh, you to start your presentation from your side. Sure. Hello. I am Swati Ramanujam, an analytics professional. Today, I am going to discuss a little about the new version of Google Analytics, which is Google Analytics 4, and how that helps in enhancing the ROI of B2B marketing. Let's begin. Google Analytics 4, or as I said, the newest version of Google Analytics, is actually a successor to Universal Analytics, and it was launched in 2019 in beta form. Google has announced that Universal Analytics will stop collecting data starting from 1st July 2023. While GA4 is a more evolved platform, with many enhanced B2B features, we need to really dig deeper and understand the difference between UA and GA4 so that all of us who are in the domain of web analytics and who also use that as part of our marketing strategy, we can all plan and prepare for the migration. So let's start with the difference between our new GA4 and the classic universal analytics that we've been using for all this while. Firstly, universal analytics, as we know, it measures hits. The various hit types that are measured by universal analytics are page hits, event hits, e-commerce hits, and social interaction hits. Whereas GA4 is all about measuring events. This is uh, one of the unique features of GA4 and every interaction of the visitor in GA4 is captured as an event. We had the provision of creating events in Universal Analytics as well. How, however, 
there the events were specified with category, action, and label. And the interesting thing is in GA4, there is no notion of category, action, or label. Next, we will talk about how Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 define sessions. As you know, a session is a group of user interactions with your website that takes place within a given time frame. In Universal Analytics, a session can compose of several page views, events, social interactions, and e-commerce transactions. Each session ends if there is an inactive period of 30 minutes. Whereas in GA4, the duration of the session is based on the span between the first and the last event in the session. Therefore, there is no cutoff time limit actually by which a session would become inactive in GA4. There, uh, there are two other factors that also results in the difference in the total number of sessions recorded by Universal Analytics and Google Analytics. For example, uh, in UA, a new campaign will start a new session, whereas in GA4, a new campaign doesn't have to start a new session. There's another factor that results in this differential count of sessions between UA and GA, and that's called late hits. What are these late hits? Late hits are those hits that are not sent immediately. In Universal Analytics, all hits that are sent within four hours of the close of the day are taken into consideration. Whereas GA4, hits are recorded even if they are sent 72 hours late. For example, uh, let's say a visitor visits the website and he drops off due to loss of service. And then uh, again he joins back once the service uh, resumes and uh, the, the gap between his first joining and second joining, let's say it's of seven, 70 hours. Universal and Analytics will not record this hit at all, whereas Google Analytics will definitely record this hit. The next difference between UA and GA4 is to do with the number of active users. User activity is detected automatically in Google Analytics 4. In contrast, in UA, an active user is recorded only with the firing of an interactive event. A user can launch an app and be considered as an active user in Google Analytics 4, but not in Universal Analytics. This also uh, might lead to a higher active user counts for Google Analytics 4 when compared with Universal Analytics. Next, let's talk a little about custom metrics and dimensions. Those of us who have used Universal Analytics in the past, we understand that how these custom dimensions and metrics is to enrich the data that we were collecting from our uh, web analytics backend. For example, if we have, uh, let's say, UA implemented in the back end of our e-commerce website, we can segment our audience versus gender and see the number of purchases made by each gender segment. In GA4, the same is achieved through event parameters. Parameters are additional pieces of information that can further specify the action the user took or add further context to the event. For example, Parameters can be used to describe the value of a purchase or to provide context into where, how, and why the event was logged. In Universal Analytics, we do not have the provision of sending parameters for events. So therefore, you know, the event data that we capture through GA4 is a lot more uh, enriched. It has a lot more details uh, that we require compared to the data that can be collected for event from Universal Analytics. Next, we'll talk a little about content grouping. Content grouping allows us to divide the entire content into different groups so that we, uh, we can compile and compare the metrics by the group name. For example, uh, if we are analyzing the data for an e-commerce website, uh, let's say that's into apparels for men and women. We might group the website's content into uh, number one, uh, women's tops, number two, women's t-shirts and shirts, number three, men's t-shirts and polos, etc., etc. 
and then see how each content group is performing with respect to the KPIs and metrics. Google Analytics 4 properties have one predefined event that populates data into the content group dimension. Additional universal analytics content group dimensions can be implemented if we need further details, uh, but those need to be implemented as event scoped custom dimensions. The last point that I'm going to talk about, the difference between uh, you know, uh, universal analytics and GA4, and though this is the last uh, feature that I'm going to talk about, this is one of the most advantageous features for the people who are migrating from UA to GA4. And uh, uh, this is cross-device tracking. This is a huge advantage to, uh, to the users, as I said, who are going to use GA4 going forward. User ID in Universal Analytics does not allow cross-device tracking. User ID in GA4 properties present a cross-platform, cross-device, uh, cr uh, uh, and different kinds of views of how users interact with our app or website. When we discuss the relevance and usefulness of GA4 uh, with respect to B2B marketing, I'll discuss the details of this cross-device uh, tracking feature that our new GA4 has. Now uh, let us uh, discuss the importance of GA4 in the context of B2B marketing. Uh, you can see on my screen I have highlighted the four fundamental advantages that GA4 provides for its users. Uh, the uh, the top these are the ones of course there are lots of other uh, advantages GA4 provides but according to me these are the uh, ones which are of topmost uh, relevance let me take these features one by one and explain to you why I think so the first one that I'm going to talk about which I said is the most advantageous feature of uh, uh, GA4 is cross device tracking now, what does uh, cross-device tracking do? Uh, it provides holistic view of customer behavior across devices. GA4 allows cross-device tracking. The user ID feature lets us associate our own identifiers with individual users so we can connect their behavior across different sessions and on various devices and platforms. Analytics interprets each user ID as a separate user, which provides us with more accurate user counts and a more holistic story about a user's relationship with our business. With this information, marketers can determine which devices drive consumer behavior and use that knowledge to optimize the customer experience. So that, that is what uh, is the advantage of uh, cross-device tracking. Now let's get into the next one. This is to do with understanding user behavior through events and funnel exploration. User engagement is measured by the events that users trigger and the web pages and app screens that users visit. The reports can help us see the pages and screens with the most user engagement as well as understand user behavior through events. Parameters, as I have already explained, provide additional information about the ways in which users interact with our website or app. For example, let's say uh, we are selling a product uh, and uh, we, uh, we want to include um, you know, uh, parameters like uh, the products that, were, that are getting viewed by uh, the customers or the visitors, uh, what is the name, category, price of that particular product, etc. Funnel exploration lets us visualize the steps our users take to complete a task and quickly see how well they are succeeding or failing at each step. Uh, in fact, funnel exploration lets us understand at which uh, place uh, actually the user has dropped off. And uh, you know, uh, this is kind of, this gives us uh, the uh, complete view of uh, the user's navigational journey and we understand how do prospects become shoppers and how do they again become buyers and how do one-time buyers become repeat buyers and with all this information we can improve 
uh, inefficient or abandoned customer journeys. And when we improve the abandonment rate, it not automatically improves the overall conversion rate uh, as well. The third thing that I'm talk, going to talk about today uh, is about the uh, automatic insights and alerts. With GA4, business receives automatic alerts when there is any shift of trend in the data. It has been possible due to Google's advanced machine learning models. In this way, the company can respond fast to the increasing sales of a particular product by notifying the suppliers about the stock that they require to be delivered. Analytics intelligence provides actually two types of insights. The first one, as I said, is the automated insight. Analytics intelligence detects unusual changes or emerging trends in our data and notifies us automatically, either on the inside dashboard or within the analytics platform. Uh, custom insights are uh, when we create conditions that detect changes in our data that are important to us. When the conditions are actually triggered, as in when that scenario happens, we see the insights on the in inside dashboard and we can also receive email alerts. Uh, we can actually create up to 50 custom insights per property. The next one that I'm going to talk about is site search. Site search is automatically tracked in GA4 property. Each time a user performs a site search, an event is generated in GA4. Site search tracking is a hidden gem for the marketer when it comes to analyzing visitors' behavior on a site. Because by, ident uh, you know, by identifying or by understanding what the visitors are looking for, what kind of words are they using while uh, do, conducting the site search, we get a clear understanding of their intent and we can customize our offering accordingly. So uh, at the end, let me just sum up what uh, I have just uh, uh, spoken about and also walked all of you through. And let me uh, explain to you uh, in, uh, in short, firstly, for a B2B marketer or for that matter, any marketer, Time is money and speed is of essence. Getting to know the behavior pattern of the visitors and having an understanding of the kind of experience they are receiving from our website can help us take quick actions to enhance the experience and thereby increase our conversion rate. This is what the uh, user journey, funnel exploration and automated alerts are helping us do in GA4. Next is about cookie tracking. Companies that implement constant requirements for analytics cookies uh, will experience data loss from their Google Analytics reporting, which is proportional to the amount of users who decline analytics cookies. This results in incomplete measurement scenarios, preventing companies from getting answers to important questions. In GA4, behavioral modeling for consent mode aims at filling this data gap by modeling the behavior of users who decline analytics cookies based on the behavior of similar users who accept analytics cookies. The training data used for modeling is based on the consented user data from the property where model modeling is activated. Due to the extraordinary circumstances in the last few years, sales has been predominantly online. It's clear that businesses need to continue to concentrate on and strengthen their online presence and in particular the customer experience to make sure they're found to be available, accessible and desirable for their target audience. Consumers align their loyalty less on price or product these days. More recently, consumer behavior uh, seem to be inclined towards loyalty correlated to the experience that they receive from a brand or business and choosing to ignore the importance of this could be catastrophic for any business. Consumers today do not only want marketers to know them, they expect mar marketers to understand them so perfectly that they should be able to cater to their requirements even if those requirements are all latent. 
This is where constant connection with our customers and understanding of their opinions and needs comes as a blessing. GA4 with clear-cut audience segmentation and the, uh, the features for capturing detailed customer interactions data exposes us to a wealth of customer knowledge that is essential for us to succeed. Well, I have spoken a lot about the various features and advantages of GA4 in today's session. I hope my discussion on GA4 has driven home the point that this is an evolved web analytics platform that provides future-ready design for B2B marketers. I would request most B2B marketers to take this advanced step towards the implementation of GA4 and intelligent and data-driven B2B marketing strategy to improve their ROI. Thank you so much. Thank you, Swati. It is a really insightful presentation and uh, it is also a very good learning experience for us, the marketers. And I hope uh, the audience who will be seeing the presentation will learn many things about GFO. And also I want to thank you to uh, because it's a great pleasure to host you, Sifati, and thank you once again, and bye, uh, see you in the next On Demand webinar. Thank you so much, thank Meghamala, you. and thanks to all the audience uh, who have spared their time to attend the session. Uh, most of all, thanks a lot to Aritik for giving me this opportunity to uh, present uh, GA4 features to, uh, to our valued audience. Thanks everyone. Have, Have a, a good, good day. day. Thank you. Uh.